that brings us to the question of fuel cell efficiency. And if you think about how efficiency is usually defined in many contexts, it's sort of like the electrical work we would be getting versus some denominator. So you're gonna, if you, if you read the literature like on fuel cells, you're gonna find efficiency numbers that are just all over the place. Part of that all over the placeness comes from the numerator. So depending on the fuel cell and depending on how the fuel cell is operated and the stack configuration and the fuel utilization and all these other factors, the amount of electrical work you get is gonna vary. But the other thing that varies is what the denominator is. Um, and people use different numbers to, to quote these efficiencies. Uh, just as an example, a common approach is to divide by the higher heating value of the fuel. So there's lots of different denominators people use, but one is higher heating value. So what that is, this is basically taking um, the uh, delta H of reaction or the standard delta H of reaction times N dot of the fuel of stack. This is what you would use if you're trying to compare to like combustion, the, the, the heating value of the fuel. Like if you just burned the fuel and you generated so many joules of thermal energy, this is telling you the percentage of that thermal energy you would convert to electricity, right? I think it's misleading though, because it kind of implies you could have collected as electrical work, all of that energy, which of course you can't because it's combustion. You can only convert a certain amount of the thermal energy that you capture to, to power, no matter what you do. Another is to just think about the efficiency of the fuel cell itself as a device. Then typically you would take uh, WE actual and instead you divide this by the reversible work, which is the numbers we were calculating when we were looking at the, um, the reversible cell potential and multiplying that by the current. So in that situation, this is sort of like a theoretical work. Um, and this is telling us, this is, this is what, what I would call the exergetic effic efficiency. And what that's telling us, telling us is about the reversibility of the fuel cell itself. Um, you'll see both of these quoted. I would say the exergetic efficiency is more meaningful when you're, you're in the process of designing an electrochemical device. You're saying, how do I maximize the amount of electrical power I'm getting per unit of fuel? Uh, I think that's a better way to think about it. HHV efficiency, I think, is um, useful when you're comparing fuel cell technology to some other thing. So we're saying we're going to build the system. It's going to have a fuel cell in it. It's going to consume an amount of a certain amount of power, excuse me, a certain amount of fuel to produce a certain amount of power. How do we compare that to a system that has no fuel cell in it? And so typically people will use the HHV efficiency because they're comparing fuel cells to gas turbine cycles or something like that. So just Word, that's the word of caution when you're reading efficiency numbers. People, just be careful. You know what, what is in the numerator, also what is in the denominator, because that does vary a lot. So uh, I wanted to sort of break these two efficiencies down a little bit, talk about heat and work in fuel cells. Uh, also, what is the thermoneutral voltage, which is something that I uh, will talk more about and the book talks quite a bit about. To start that off uh, as a sort of a thought experiment, is the following scenario. Imagine we have our fuel and our and air, and we're feeding these things into our fuel cell at some temperature, call it temperature T. For the moment, I'm just thinking about this fuel cell device as a black box. This could be a cell, it could be a stack of cells. Um, and what's coming out is uh, un unreacted nitrogen um, 
unreacted oxygen. We could also have, we'll also have combustion product products. So I'm not going to specify which is in which stream because it depends on the type of fuel cell. But in general, we're going to have unused fuel that might come out depending on how much our utilization is. And then um, we're also in general going to have water and or CO2, depending on what our fuel is that's coming out. Maybe some other stuff too. And um, I'm going to imagine for the moment that all of this stuff is coming out at temperature T. So it's an iso, this is an, I'm imagining this as an isothermal process. Uh, and then as a result of what we're doing in this fuel cell and the stuff going in and going out, we produce a certain amount of electrical work at a some rate, steady state, WE dot. And then we're also producing heat. And in terms of our boundary conditions, I'm going to assume we're producing that heat at temperature T. So, so one place to start this is to think about what if we do an exergy analysis? Like we think about, go back to 325, episode C2, I talk about this a little bit. What, what is it um, that we can get, we expect, like if we did everything completely reversibly? And so we can treat that in this case in the general way and say that because it's isothermal, that the uh, reversible work, which is the maximum work that we could possibly get out, we can determine that by looking at the exergies. So if we look at the inlet and outlet exergies, the difference between them would have to be the reversible work. The exergetic flow of the heat is zero because it's leaving at the same temperature as the system. I can further write this out as minus the reaction rate um, times delta H of the reaction at temperature T minus the environmental temperature times delta S of the reaction at temperature T. And I'm, I'm going to think about this as the environmental temperature just being the operating temperature because we don't have an, we In this case, I haven't invoked any type of value for the thermal energy. I'm just talking about this as an isothermal process and I'm drawing the heat flow as leaving at temperature T. So let's take the environmental temperature as just being the temperature T0, excuse me, temperature T is just T0. And then we end up with W rev. Uh, is equal to uh, xi dot times minus delta G of reaction. So this agrees with what we've been talking about so far, which is that um, the reversible cell potential corresponds to the maximum work, and that reversible cell potential tied is tied to delta G of reaction. This goes back to what we were talking about with the Nernst equation. So if we further break this down, if I wanted to think about an exergetic efficiency, um, we could define that, and I'm going to define it as uh, epsilon exergetic. This is going to be equal to the electrical work that we're producing divided by this quantity that we're describing here, which is W rev. Um, and this will be N F V cell times n dot fuel times the utilization, whatever amount of fuel that we're actually using, times the feed, times the efficiency of the use of that fuel. And then we're dividing that by rev v, w dot rev, which we're saying is equal to um, minus delta g of the reaction times n dot fuel. And the fuels cancel. Um, and then I'm also going to divide by NF and then multiply by NF. And that gives us this quantity right here as the um, reversible cell potential. So work all this out. Eta X ends up being the fuel utilization times V cell divided by V rev or V equilibrium which is coming from the Nernst equation. So this is basically telling us that there's two components to the exergetic efficiency. 
One is how much of the fuel do we actually react to form electrochemically? So this is our sometimes called epsilon fuel. So you can think of the, you, this, this sort of tells you a little bit about what, so sort of what is the, the, what is the uh, efficiency impact of fuel utilization? Well, it is, it's a measure of how much of that fuel is actually being reacted electrochemically and resulting in electrical work. So it's an efficiency in a sense. Uh, and some people think about it that way. So I'll call it epsilon fuel. And that's what um, the book describes it as. And then we have this other quantity, the ratio of V cell over V equilibrium. That quantity is like a, an expression of how much of the electrical energy that we could be extracting from a given amount of reaction is being converted to electrical work. And some people will call this the voltage efficiency. So it has to do with the operational voltage and how close that operational voltage is to the reversible potential. Both these things are important. The amount of fuel that we're actually consuming electri electrochemically and the amount of electrochemical fuel which is actually be converted into electrical work. Those two both are contributing to this exergetic efficiency. So, you know, if we take our data center as an example, let's say we're only using 80% of the fuel. And then let's say we're running at a cell voltage of 0.7 volts. So that means epsilon voltage. This would be 0.7 volts divided by 1.03 volts, which was the Nernst potential that we calculated. Um, this is, oops, 0.67. So putting those together, we're talking about an exergetic efficiency of about 53%. So independent of any considerations of what we might have done with the thermal energy, this is telling us how, how good a job did we do of converting the fuel into electricity with the fuel cell.